Hi guys, I'm Shlomik from Job Test Prep, and in this video I will take five samples of the most common CCAT question types and solve them start to finish. Let's go! But before we start solving, let's go over the various types of questions you might encounter during the CCAT. The CCAT, or the Criteria Cognitive Attitude Test, contains 50 questions divided into four main sections – Math, Verbal, Abstract, and Logic – with three types of questions on each. The following five types are very common on the CCAT, and we will therefore go over each of them. Now this is obviously not a complete overview of these questions. It is just a sample, so you get a sense about how to approach such questions when taking the actual CCAT. Each question type comes in dozens of shapes and forms, and to be really prepared, you need to go over many, many more questions. And now, after the long introduction, we finally get to the subject of this video and commence with the question solving. This question belongs to a very well-known type of word problems, a travel problem. Now, what most people do when they encounter such a problem is the way they did it at school. Formulate the equations based on the x equals v times t formula, solve, and find the solution. You can go ahead and do that in this question as well, ending up with two equations in two variables. But that kind of calculation requires time. A lot of time. That brings me to rule number one in solving CCAT questions. You need to solve fast. With 50 questions in 15 minutes, you must get accustomed to quick solving tricks and shortcuts to cover as many questions as possible. Let's see how we do it in this question. Now if you look at the question carefully, you'll see that we do not know, nor ask to find, the distance Jasmine went. That gives us a good hunch that we can completely disregard this information when solving. So let's create a table for each scenario, detailing Jasmine's walking time and speed. In the first scenario, it takes Jasmine three times longer to complete the first half at speed A than the second half at speed 3A. In the second scenario, both halves take Jasmine the same time to complete. That means that the overall time in scenario 2 is exactly half the time of scenario 1, that is, two and a half hours. So the correct answer is B. Of all numerical question types on the CCAT, number series are the ones that mostly require practice. That is because while word problems and basic numeracy require mostly quick thinking and calculation skills, number series heavily rely on previous experience and familiarity with common types of series. And yet, solid techniques can also help in cases you're unfamiliar with a presented series. Take a look at the following question, for instance. When you approach this kind of question, it is recommended to first see if any relationships between the numbers come to mind within the first few seconds. The more you practice with various types of series, the faster and more often you will be able to recognize the pattern. However, if you find no such pattern, the next step is usually to create a series of differences between the numbers of the original series. If no relationship between this series emerges, we will try repeating the process one more time. Now the pattern becomes clear. The second series of differences is the series of squares of natural numbers, starting with 2. The next number in that series should, therefore, be 25. Calculating backwards, we can come to the final answer. As I previously said, number series really do require quite a bit of experience and practice to solve quickly, so make sure you go over as many questions of that type as you can before taking the CCAT. Next type of question is a word analogy, the most common type in the verbal section. Word analogies are often considered to be one of the easiest forms of verbal questions. However, they do have several tricky pitfalls people tend to overlook. To solve these questions, you should normally use the technique of sentence formation. Form a sentence that is true for the original analogy and see which of the options fits the original meaning. It is easy to see that A, B, and E do not form the same logical relationship as the original terms, so we can cross them out. In answer B, you can see that the relationship is correct, but reverse. Keys are the part of the piano which makes the music not the other way around. That means that the order of the words in the analogy is also important, as well as their content. We are left with options C and D. To decide which of them is the correct one, we will have to look closer at the terms, 
and realize that while bars are an integral part of the xylophone, same as with the strings of a guitar, a bow is an external part to the violin. Therefore, the correct answer is C. To sum it up, in a word analogy question, you should first formulate a sentence and apply it to all answer choices. Those that do not conform with a logical rule should be crossed out. If there is more than one answer choice left, you will have to use your common sense to find the slight differences between the answers. If you do not manage to do that in a reasonable amount of time, pick the one that feels best and move on. Matrices questions on the CCAT come in the form of a 3x3 matrix, in which one shape is missing. Your task is to find a missing shape based on the rules given in the columns or rows. In this question, we can see that the first transition is made through the rows, as the shapes in the leftmost box also appear in a different formation in the middle box of each row. In the first row, for instance, the L shape is in the arrow which is in the square. The first transition then follows the motion rule, which is one of the five most common secant matrix rules. When we come to the second transition, we can see that the innermost shape, like the L shape in the top row, stretches, and the middle shape, in that case the arrow, is replaced with the one two rows beneath it, which is the triangle. That means we now have a progression rule through the row in the inner shape, and a motion rule through the columns in the outer shape. Combining all this information, we can now turn our look to the bottom row. We know that the innermost shape, which is the pie chart, should stretch, and that the middle shape, the triangle, should be replaced with the one two rows beneath it, which is the cross. The outer shape should remain the same. The correct answer is therefore C. This is quite an elaborate solution, but to simplify it, you should approach secret matrix questions with the following rules in mind. Remember the five matrix rules, look for each of them separately in the rows and columns, and examine the transitions one step at a time. This kind of process will allow you to dismantle the large problem into a set of smaller ones, making it easier to solve. Okay, last question. Now from the logical section. This kind of question is called seating arrangements, because you're required to order a list of objects, people, etc. by a certain set of rules. Take a deep breath, here we go. Most people will jump right into understanding how the entire line might look like, checking every possible position and who could stand there. After drawing a sketch of the line with Heather being third, they will get to the three possible line formations. Looking at the bottom row, which is the last place in line, we can see that either Georgia, Ian, Kilgore, or Lumina can stand there. As in the word problem from earlier, this solution is correct, but will take long minutes to reach. Let's see how we can do it much faster. First, let's look at the answer options. Georgia appears in all answer options, so she can naturally be last. There's no need to check it. John appears in only one answer choice, E so that is a good indication that he probably cannot be last. Otherwise, the answer is self-evident. And yet, let's check it just to be sure. According to the third rule, John is in front of Heather. If John is in front of anyone, that means he cannot possibly be last. Ian appears in all remaining answers. No need to check for him as well. The only question is whether Kilgore, Lumina, or both can stand last. After checking each of these cases specifically, we can deduce that there is no rule preventing either Kilgore or Lumina from being last. You can see how we have turned the solution from determining the exact locations of all six participants in every possible variation to checking only two to three specific individuals standing last. This will immediately cut down on your solving time. That's it, five CCAT questions solved. For more sample questions, a free CCAT sample test, and the most accurate CCAT tailored preparation available online, check out our webpage. That's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed and learned. Now it's your turn to practice. Good luck.